Welcome back to WB Mason presents the Joe Girardi Show. Now, Joe, before we get into the pitching and the lineups as of late, a big milestone win for you on Friday night, 500. What does that mean to you? Well, I know that I'm truly blessed, and I, I'm grateful to the Steinbrenner family and Cash for giving me this opportunity. But along the way, I've had a great coaching staff. You know, Larry Rothschild, Kay Long, just Mick Kelleher, Rob Thompson, um, Mike Harkey. I, I've had a great coaching staff and the support staff that we have and the players. The players have been magnificent, and that's the reason you get the 500 wins. Did they do anything special for you that night? Uh, we had a little toast after the game. Mo uh, toasted uh, the 500th win. It was kind of nice, and it was, it was also a special day, um, you know, because we consider ourselves a family. And Andy Pettit's son in a playoff game threw a no-hitter and they won five to nothing. So it was a great day. Have you seen him pitch yet, Josh? No, Pettit? I haven't. But I saw a picture of him and he's right-handed, but he's basically got the same motion and leg kick as Andy. So, I, I mean, hopefully the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Time will tell with that. He's going to attend Baylor. But, Joe, back to you. Congratulations from Thank everyone you. at the S Network on that 500th win. Thank you. Speaking of pitchers and Josh Pettit, let's talk about his father and Andy Pettit. Uh, with what you've seen from him, he kind of lost his cutter, a pitch that he had relied on so yeah. much throughout his career. Have you ever seen that with, I, with him in particular? Or not with him. I, I've seen pitchers lose other pitchers. And, and I think if Andy wasn't 40 years old, people wouldn't be so worried about it. But I think, you know, we always talk about it. If you're, if you're old people worry about you. If you're overweight and you're struggling, they worry about you too. So I, I really feel that he'll get on track. I don't, you know, Paul O'Neill used to say, can a man forget how to hit in a week when he would be struggling? And I'm saying, no, a man's not going to forget how, and he's not going to forget how to pitch, and he's not going to forget how to throw that cutter. With him in particular, you know, you look at his track record and, and you look at all of that, but aside from that cutter, he does have an awful lot of other pitches that he can go to. Yeah, he sure does. Um, he has his curveball, he has his changeup, he's got two types of fastballs. He's got one that's a four-seamer and one that's going to sink. So he has other weapons. The cutter happens to be a strikeout pitch or a ground ball pitch, which he uses to get a lot of double plays or strikeouts, which are important when runners get on base. Uh, let's talk a little bit about C.C. Sabathia. He's had an interesting year so far, and it looked as though, aside from that first inning in Colorado, that he was really getting in a groove there, retired 11 straight before Mother Nature took over. Yeah. When he's pitching that way, how much are you sitting there praying, come on, don't rain right now, we want to continue to get this guy out there? Yeah, you at least wanted to get through five if the rain stayed there forever but the, the problem that it creates for you is not so much that day it's the days after where Friday you know we go into Kansas City and you don't want to use Mo you don't want to use Robertson you don't want to use Preston Claiborne because we've used them the last couple of days and we really had to get a lot out of our bullpen in Colorado so I mean that's the issue um, he was on a roll, and, and I think he might have even thrown a complete game that day, and I was disappointed for him and disappointed for us, but it worked out okay. Um, as far as Hiroki Kuroda is concerned, uh, he's been a guy that's been so consistent for you, not only last year, uh, but this year again. What have you seen in him the last week? Just he's so consistent with his stuff, and even when he's not, even the, the times that he struggled a little bit early, he seems to hang in there until he finds it. Um, we've had a couple starts like that. I mean, the one day he didn't find his slider till the third inning, um, and he found it, and then he got on a roll. He, he just really knows how to pitch, and he's consistent, and uh, he even put the ball in play in Colorado, so we were excited about that. You look at Phil Hughes. Prior to his start in Kansas City, he had four fantastic starts. Kansas City kind of up and down, but we've seen this throughout Phil Hughes' career. So who's the real Phil Hughes? Is it the guy that had the great four starts, or is it the guy that you saw in Kansas City? Well, I think it's both. You know, I think every pitcher is going to have some stinkers every once in a while. That's the bottom line, or they'd end up 32-0. and 0. We haven't seen that in a long time. Anyone win 30 games. So I, I think it's a little bit of both. Sometimes you're not going to have your good stuff. Sometimes you're going to get away with pitches, and sometimes you're not. Overall, you get the win that night, certainly what you want. But also with Phil Hughes, I have to believe that you're encouraged by the fact that he's been pretty aggressive in attacking guys, throwing first pitch strike and really going after him. Yeah, and his fastball velocity has remained constant, and his breaking stuff has gotten better. He's used his changeup, he's used his slider, and he's used his curveball. He's mixed his pitches. So uh, I am encouraged from what I'm seeing. A little bit of a newcomer to the rotation. We saw him a little bit last year with the injury to Ivan Nova. We now have David Phelps again in the rotation. What have you seen out of him in his first couple starts? He knows how to pitch. Uh, that's the bottom line about David Phelps. Uh, he threw a good game in Colorado. I think he gave up the two runs in the six innings for us. Um, he really knows how to move the ball around. He's got a couple different fastballs. He's got, you know, he calls it a slider. It's kind of like a cutter. He's got the, the four-seamer, the two-seamer. He'll mix in his curveball and his changeup. He holds runners, and he feels his position really well. So we like what we see. 
Um, for him, he's got to rely on his command because he's not going to blow people away, but he's got good command. Now, Nova, if he is healthy, is that a foregone conclusion that he'll be back in the rotation at the big league level? Well, we want him back. I mean, we want to get him on a roll. So uh, we have to decide, you know, does he, what's next for him? I think that's the most important thing. Now, Mariano Rivera will move kind of things into the relief corp. He's been unbelievable so far this year. You always said he's going to come back as the same Mariano Rivera, but did you really think that he would be this good to start the season? I did believe that. As long as his arm was fine, I, I, I didn't think the knee was going to change who he was because I knew that would heal. Now, if he would have hurt his shoulder or his elbow, I would have said, you know what, the chances of him coming back and being the same guy at 43 aren't isn't very good. But because he hurt his knee and you knew that that was going to be okay, I felt he'd be able to get back. You mentioned the knee and there was a bit of a, a funny moment for the Yankees and Mariano Rivera on Friday night in Kansas City. Whose idea was that sign, no mozo? Well, it was some of the coaches and some of the support staff who uh, put this all together. And uh, they put a little time, some paint, some caution tape, and uh, some chalk out on the outfield track and they had a lot of fun with it. I mean, he's unbelievable in the sense that he said, nothing changes for me. I'll go back out there. I'll stand in that same spot. I'll continue to shag. That's pretty unbelievable in a sense, and a guy that almost had a career-ending injury. I don't think athletes ever want to give up their routine. And sometimes as athletes, we have to adjust our routine because maybe we don't have the energy or the stamina that we used to. But that's part of who Mo is. Shag, he still wants to play center field one time in the big <laughs> leagues. And I... And I I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's part of who he is. This is his final season, you think, maybe? I don't know. I'd probably get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> probably.